a hyper mature senile cataract with a very tense capsular bag 2.8 mm keratome enters from the anterior sclera you can see a scroll of conjunctiva there traverses across the limbus and enters the chamber in the peripheral cornea stain is done under the air visco fills the eye HPMC is the visco I prefer because it coats the endothelium quite well. The cystitum perforates the floor of the tunnel at the limbus and enters the chamber. This way the tunnel remains closed during the surgery and uh, AC is well formed um, throughout. So a small rexis is created. A small tear flap is noted there and uh, ensuring that AC does not shallow. The tunnel is enlarged with a blunt keratome. The anterior end of the tunnel is further enlarged using a 2.8 mm keratome, ensuring that the anterior end of the tunnel remains straight. This is a small flap which can go to the periphery, so it's removed with utrata. The nucleus is rotated, chamber is kept little shallower than normal so that to facilitate the nuclear rotation and uh, the peripheral cortex is disturbed so that it flows into the anterior chamber. So this is to debulk the cataract nucleus before uh, it's further planned. See that the zonules are not pulled or pushed by lateral movement of the nucleus. Uh, a small nick is made in the rexis and utrata forceps helps us to enlarge the uh, capsular rexis. The adequate size rexis is uh, very important here. It should not be too small uh, because then there will be a lot of zonular traction when you are rotating the nucleus. So that is the completion of rexis. Nucleus is now lifted out by manually push the uh, nucleus to the left side with the, since the hook and then rotate it into the anterior chamber, ensure that zonules are not uh, disturbed during this procedure. Nucleus is bisected uh, in the anterior chamber. Uh, usually I use a shaft of a 25 gauge candle here because of hardness, it's not slitting, it's not bisecting it. So I use a cystotome itself. Cystotome is bent at 45 degrees, not at 90 degrees at the tip of it. The, uh, it itself is used to score the nucleus into two portions and the nucleus is now uh, visco sandwiched and taken out. A mini vectus is utilized to support the uh, nucleus behind. That is a small vectus and it is held in front like a forceps with a 25 gauge cannula which is continuously injecting HPMC so that the nucleus is not rubbing the endothelium and uh, reducing the specular count. Now the uh, Simco cannula which is mounted on a silicon bulb, the aspiration as well as irrigation is controlled by the surgeon depending upon the uh, visualization of the anterior chamber through the microscope. So you can see there is no uh, shadowing of the AC or no f deepening of the AC which will stretch the posterior capsule backwards and puts a stretch on the zonules. This is done at normal AC depth and the intraocular pressure inside is very low. The fluid is controlled, so the amount of fluid you need for the completion of surgery is only about 25 to 30 milliliters of balanced salt solution. A, a, a J-shaped Simco cannula is utilized to aspirate the uh, the sub-incisional cortex and also to polish the capsule thoroughly. Uh, the uh, hydrodissection is not done at all in this patient, so cortical aspiration is a little difficult. If you have done a capsular separating hydrodissection, the capsular separation, cortical separation would have occurred and cortical aspiration would be very easy. IOL is injected into the capsular bag and rotated. The uh, entire viscoelastic in the capsular bag in the angle region and the one which is stuck to the back of the cornea is systematically aspirated because it's an uh, dispersive viscoelastic. You need to take additional time to go to every nook and corner of the anterior chamber and the angle region especially to minimize the post-operative pressure hike. Now I'm behind the lens to uh, remove the visco. 
and that's the end of surgery there's no need to hydrate the stroma of the tunnel this tunnel automatically closes at the end of surgery and produce about half diopter of sia thank you